Hi there, my name is Tom. I work as a maritime English teacher on school ship Gone in Stavanger, Norway. Today I'm going to jump back into Marang, which is a fantastic piece of software which you can download to your computer to learn maritime English. I've left a link where you found this video on YouTube where you can download the software to your computer. As well, there's worksheets if you like, but I made them mostly for my Norwegian students. Today, we're going to go back into Unit 1, Import, and we're going to go to Lead In 2 this time. If you didn't catch my Lead In 1, check out that video as well. So here's what the modding looks like. Click on Intermediate Level, and today we're going to go to Unit 1, Import and then you click on lead in two and this is what it looks like let's get a better picture of it here so what they do basically is have a bunch of words and you click on the word and it gives you a definition and again just a definition for a word is not so easy because you need to know what the word means in the context of where you find it in ports now you're not going to find every single one of these words in this video. Some of the words I've already gone through with you in the last video, lead in one, so check that out. And some of the words here I will take in the next video when I go into the introduction of modding. So as we go through this exercise, pick out what you think the correct word is on the left hand side for what you see in the picture. And so what do we see in this picture? We see big bags. Well, there's a special name for something that's a big bag made out of canvas. You see it's got ties on it as well. And we use these to transport cargo such as wool. I don't know if you've ever been on a farm or raised with horses, but hay comes in big bulky bags like this sometimes. What do you call that? It's not a bag. A bag is something a little smaller. So you would have a what of hay, a what of wool. The correct word is a bale. So you would find wool or hay or different things wrapped up in bags. Big bags we call bales and they have ties around them. Okay, let's go on to the next word. In Norwegian, we call that bala, bala, right. Okay, let's go to the next picture. Here you have a box, a wooden box, but generally boxes are made out of cardboard, thin, uh, strong, paper-like. In Norwegian, we call that pop. But you see here, this box is quite large. It's made out of wood. What do you call a rather large wooden box that we keep cargo in? Maybe fragile cargo like glass that's got something in there to protect it so it doesn't bang around. What do you call this? Wooden box, large wooden box. It's called a crate, right? A crate. In Norwegian, we call it a trekassa. Casa. So yes, different types of cargoes can come in boxes, cardboard boxes, yes, but also in larger wooden boxes, we call those crates. So you can have large, medium, small, different sizes. Great. Next one. What do you call the people that are actually dockside, quayside, helping the ship load and unload vessels? What do you call these people? Well, they're working on the dock, so you could call them dock workers, but the standard term going long back in time is called a stevedore, stevedore. In America, we also call them longshoremen, longshoremen. But stevedore is the general term around the world, but you could also say dock workers. It reminds me of a joke. One time when I was talking to this guy and he was a dock worker, but his job was 
grabbing cargo coming off the side of the ship with a big hook and bring it over onto the quay. And he was at a bar one night, and somebody asked him, well, what do you do for a living? And he said, I'm a hooker. And that didn't go over so well. Okay, go to the next one. So in Norwegian, dockarbeiter, you can say dock worker. That works pretty well. Okay, and here you can see in the right side of the picture, scrap metal. That's a big cargo going over, especially people stripping away the infrastructure of, for example, America and sending it over to China. So scrap metal, uh, bulk cargo, yes, but how do you get it in and out of the vessel? Well, a lot of times you'll see this device. Sometimes it is magnetized, other times not. On the end of a crane, you use a, and the word is a grabber. Right, so it is a grabber. That is what it's called for lots of different types of cargo, bulk cargo, but particularly scrap metal. In Norwegian, I didn't have a good word. I just came up with grab kran. Thought that might work. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Well, here you have, we talked about last time, forklifts a lot of times will move cargo on and off the vessel. They have forks that go in these two holes to lift up this, what is this called again? Do you remember? You should know it's called a pallet, a pallet. Yes, so we have forklifts. We also have a pallet jack, which is used to move these around the spaces of a ship. In Norwegian, you call this a lastepal, lastepal. Yes, so this was the big innovation that happened after the war, where cargo will be placed on pallets, and then pallets would be loaded into containers. We're going to talk about containerization in just a little bit. But this is the basic device that changed, revolutionized shipping. Let's move on. So here you have quite large pieces of cargo, and there's no container. They're just wrapped up and secured on board in the hole. What do you call cargo that doesn't really come in any kind of container, but still is a single piece? Well, that should give you a clue with a word. We call this piece goods, piece goods. Piece goods is a general term for cargo, dry cargo in general that comes in box and bales and crates, but we call particularly large pieces of cargo standing on their own piece goods. Now in Norwegian, piece goods is stick goods, stick goods. And actually, Norwegians refer to a stick goods sheep, what we call just a traditional <coughs> multi-purpose dry cargo vessel, which we're going to be talking in the next video about. That's what a Norwegian would call a stickwood ship, just taking general dry cargo. Okay, let's go on to the next. And here we have the complete opposite. Here is dry cargo. It doesn't come in a container, but it's loose, either granules or grains or rocks. It's not one solid piece, so it's not piece goods. What do you call this type of cargo that's loose and dry? It's called bulk cargo, bulk cargo. And you have ships that are made to carry just this particular type of cargo. Now, this doesn't look like scrap metal. You see a grabber here loading in the cargo. So I'm not quite sure. Lots of different types of bulk cargo, coal, rice, grain. Uh, there's many, many different types of bulk cargoes which are loaded directly into the hold and then pulled out again. So that's dry. If we go to Norwegian, we call it last is the word for cargo. So you would say bulk, same word, bulk, last. And then that's dry if you go to the opposite of dry when you have, this is liquefied natural gas. This is a type of what kind of cargo? 
Well, that's the clue for you. It's liquid bulk cargo. Here I said liquid cargo. It should actually be liquid bulk cargo. This is a LNG tanker. And you can always recognize an LNG tanker by the domes that it carries forward in the ship. The domes are to keep the liquid insulated. Here you can see the insulation as well as down to minus 60 so that it is actually able to be stored quite compactly. If it were at regular room temperature, it would be uh, many times the size. <coughs> so it's kept cold and insulated to transport it. We have lots of different types of liquid bulk carriers as well. Tankers, oil tankers, chemical tankers. We'll get into that in a later lesson or you can check out my English for Mariners series of videos, Unit 5, to talk about different types of vessels. Right, Norwegian Flytna last, Flytna bulk last, you can say for this. So here we have an object that has wheels, but this is not a truck or a lorry as we talked about last time. Truck is American. Lorry is British. Don't get confused with gaffel truck, a forklift. Don't call a forklift a truck in, a, in American because that's a lorry in British. Lastabil in Norwegian. This kind of looks like one, but what do we call anything on land that has wheels and an engine? Anything on land with wheels and engine we call a vehicle, a vehicle. <coughs> Norwegian, you say sjøretøy. Sjøretøy. And in Norwegian, a ship is called fartøy, a vehicle, sjøretøy. So we say a vessel on sea and a vehicle on land. But this here, this is a particular type of vehicle. It's called, if you can see here, AGV, an automated guided vehicle. And this has revolutionized cargo handling in ports as we know it today. Not all ports have AGVs, but a lot of the big ones, Rotterdam, most likely Shanghai, Bremen. Why? Well, you can see they're completely automated. Let's just look a little bit at history before we had containerization. Before containerization, you'd have to have cargo loaded onto trucks or lorries. And then when you got to the ports, key sides, you'd have to have somebody unload the lorries onto the key side. And then the cargo would get loaded onto the crane or picked up by the crane put on the ship, and then you'd have to have stevedores, dock workers, as well as crew members unloading the cargo onto the ship and then stowing it. But after containerization, cargo at the source point would be loaded into a container on pallets. The container would be picked up directly off the lorry by the crane, put onto the ship, and it's done. But still, you needed to have people in the ports to move the containers around inside the port. If it's going to be a couple days or a week before the cargo gets shipped out, it has to be stacked up somewhere. Well, that's what you do. You call them the stacks, the container stacks. And so they'd have to be driven around inside the port to be stored for a temporary point of time. Well, now, instead of having dock workers drive those containers around, you have it all automated on a computer program. So let's just take a look. I've got a video here that shows you how it works. I believe this is Rotterdam. Giant robots. Almost every machine you now see is controlled by computer. And these high-tech Titans output is staggering. Each loading crane can deadlift 40 tons. Below, the container's chariot awaits. Called an automated guided vehicle, AGV, this car has a mind of its own. Literally. There's no driver because an onboard navigation system regulates its position 
direction, even speed by a magnetic grid set into the tarmac. Once the container is loaded on the AGV's back, top-mounted infrared eyes ID the container and instantly roll the load to a preset stacking location, where another giant robot takes over. The stacking crane. Towering five stories in the air, this mega machine can grab, haul, and drop the equivalent of five school buses. Like the AGV, she takes orders from no man. Every move along her magnetic track is totally pre-programmed. Just like the other 37 cranes. And 370 robotic cars. Right, so let's go back. It's a sad fact. The robots are taking over, taking away men's jobs, but it's the truth. The stevedores, dock workers, longshoremen, less and less jobs out there as technology is taking over their jobs. Amazing, the only human is Keyside with the portainer or Keyside crane lifting the cargo, the containers on and off the ships, and then the computers take over taking the containers and putting them in the stacks. Great, let's go on to the next one. Well, here, what do you call the place? Well, when you get off an airplane, you go to the gate, and then you walk into the same thing here with a ship. When you passengers disembark the ship, they go into the terminal. Terminal is the word. So that's the word that we use for the central place where passengers would get on board or get off the ship. Same thing with an airport. We have different terminals. In Norwegian, same exact word, terminal. Right. And so what do we call the word where we tie a ship fast to the quayside? When we park the ship and we make sure it is secure what do we call the word? It's a verb. We call it to, to moor, to moor. So you moor a ship at a berth. We talked about last time. A berth is your parking spot. It's numbered exactly where you're going to tie or moor your ship to the quayside. And these are called, not ropes, but mooring lines. Mooring lines. And there's lots of different types of mooring lines. And we'll get to that in another video. Norwegian, what do you say to moor? You say, ofotoya. Ofotoya. Right. Great. And here, we talked about last time, this is a tug or a tugboat. But if you are a big ship and you need help to maneuver into port in those tight spaces, you're going to call VTS, Vessel Traffic Services, on channel 16. And you're going to request, what's the word that you would request a tugboat to come? You would request towage. Towage is what we call. So you'll be asking for towage and a tug will come and assist. Norwegian, we call that slapping, slapping, to tow or slap. Right, here we go to the next. And here you see some stevedores or dock workers, longshoremen, could be crew members, putting cargo on and off the ship. What do we call that? verbs when you put on and take off cargo to load and unload cargo. Norwegian, you actually have two words, olasta and olosa. Lasta from the word last cargo comes from that to put on, losa to take off. But in English, we have one more word. Loading cargo just gets it on board the ship. 
but to stow to stow cargo is to put it in its proper place. In Norwegian, you say ostua. Here you have a picture of a stowage plan. I believe this is a multi-purpose dry cargo vessel, but it's got containers forwards. It looks like it has holds with hatches aft. So I'm not sure, but the ship owning companies will make sure that each piece of cargo has its proper place on board, of course, in conjunction with the CO who's responsible for putting the stowage plan into effect. And where you place cargo, of course, is very important for the ship's stability. Heavy cargo below, uh, lighter cargo above, but that all has to do depend on the weather if you want to heavy or a tender ship. Well, that's something we'll get into later. But stowing cargo in its proper place has everything to do with how the ship will handle. So there's very detailed computer stowage plans, which helps the CEO and the rest of the deck officers know exactly where to put what on board a vessel. So yes, you have loading cargo and unloading, but stowing cargo is perhaps even more important. Right, well, this is our last slide. You can see this is the entry by land to a port, and up here we have no twick, no entry. Can you even imagine what a twick is? Well, I'll give it to you. This is America. It's a transportation worker's identity card is what it stands for after 9-11 and the introduction of the ISPS, the port control, very much security on all ports to guard against any kind of terrorism going on. So anybody who is entering a port has to have identity verified. But when you come into a port, either by sea as a vessel or by land on a vehicle, you're going to meet who? Who are the officials that you have to meet and be approved to enter by? They are called the port authorities. Port authorities will come on board the vessel first to make sure everything is ship shape, and, or that you'll meet them at the gate where you have to show identification to get in. So port authorities are the different types, lots of different types. You have the health, you have customs, you have, yes, many different types of port authorities to deal with. Right, in Norwegian, you say Havnevesen, Havnevesen, which is the port authority. Right, I think that's good for now. Stay tuned. Next time, we're going to be going into Marang introduction and talking about general terms about describing a vessel, length and width and breadth. See you then. Bye-bye for now.